What up nerds, my name's Ryan. I did my HSC in 2019 and in this video, I'm going to guide you through circular motion, common questions, part one. Now this video is meant as a complement to a previous video that I did on the basics of circular motion theory. If you're not familiar with that, click the link in the top right. If you remember in that theory video, I detailed the three most important equations for circular motion and the three equations that we'll be using to answer the one, two, three, four, five basic questions that I have prepared for you here. The first equation is for tangential velocity. So V is equal to two pi R all divided by big T where R is the radius and big T is the period of the circular motion. The second equation is centripetal force, which is equal to m multiplied by v squared all over r, where m is the mass of the object in circular motion, and v is the tangential velocity of the object in circular motion. And the third equation is angular velocity, which is change in theta over change in time, little t. So it's not period, it's just straight, straight up time. So I'll copy these three equations and I'll reference them in the following five questions. Okay, so question one. What is the tangential velocity of a six kilogram mass traveling in a circular path of radius 20 meters with a period of 10 seconds? Okay, so here are our three equations. And our first job is to decide which of these three equations will be most relevant to the question. So we have an object traveling in a circular path with a mass of six kilograms, a radius of 20 meters, and a period of 10 seconds. And we have been asked to find the tangential velocity of this object, V. So the question is asking us to find the tangential velocity, V. So first and foremost, we need an equation that includes the variable V. So the first equation includes that, the second equation includes a V, the third equation doesn't, so we will ignore the third equation. And if, if we look at the second equation, it asks us for a mass which we have, a tangential velocity which we are trying to find, a radius which we have, but a centripetal force that we do not have, and so we'll have to ignore the second equation as well. The first equation has the variable for tangential velocity which we're trying to find, it has two pi, which is just a constant. It has a variable for radius r, which we have a value for. And it has a variable for period, which we also have a value for. So the first equation is what we will be using. If we substitute our values into this, we'll get v is equal to two pi multiplied by the radius, which in our case is 20 meters, all divided by big T, which is the period, which in our case is 10. We can simplify this 20 to be a two when it's divided by the 10. And then we have two times pi times two. And our final answer is four pi meters per second. So the tangential velocity is four pi meters per second. Question two, an object is traveling in a circular path and has a tangential velocity of 10 pi meters per second. So we have an object here in traveling in a circular path with a tangential velocity of 10 pi meters per second. The object completes 12 full circular revolutions every three seconds. So of what use is that information? Well, we can derive the period from that information. So the period big T is just equal to the number of revolutions an object completes divided by the time taken for those revolutions. So this object has 12 revolutions every three seconds. That tells us that the object's period is 12 divided by three, which is equal to four seconds. So once again, I'll paste the three important equations and we'll consider which of these equations will we use. The question is asking, what is the radius of the circular path? So what is the radius of this circular path here? So first and foremost, we need an equation that contains the radius variable. So the first equation contains the radius variable. The second one also does. The third one doesn't, so we will ignore it. 
If we look at the first equation, we have a V, we have a big T, so this equation will work. Uh, in the second equation, we have the centripetal force, which we were not given in the question. It also has the mass, which we also were not given in the question, so we will ignore equation two. So substituting our values into this equation here gives us 10 pi is equal to two pi multiplied by the radius r, which we are trying to find, divided by the period of the object, which we found to be four seconds. So if we multiply both sides of this equation by four, four on the bottom here will cancel out with the four on the top here, and we will be left with 40 pi is equal to two pi r. And if we divide both sides by two pi, we will get r is equal to 40 pi divided by two pi, which will give us a final answer of 20 meters. So the radius of this object's circular motion is equal to 20 meters. Question three, what is the centripetal force of a six kilogram mass traveling in a circular path of radius 20 meters with a period of 10 seconds? We have an object moving in a circular path of mass six kilograms, radius of 20 meters, and a period of 10 seconds. Once again, if we look at the three equations that we've been considering, we have to figure out which of these equations we will be using. Okay, so we are asked to find centripetal force. The only equation with centripetal force as a variable is the second equation. And so we're definitely going to be using the second equation. We have mass, we have the radius. However, we do not yet have a value for the tangential velocity. If we look at the equation for tangential velocity, we see that in order to figure it out, we need a radius, which we do have, and a period, which we also have. And we know that the third equation is pretty irrelevant because there's nothing here that we really need. So first, in order to find the tangential velocity, we'll substitute our values for radius and period. So tangential velocity is equal to two pi times our r, which is 20 meters divided by our period, which is 10 seconds. So our final answer is four pi meters per second. Actually, I misspoke there. It's not our final answer. It's our answer for the tangential velocity. So we can use that value when trying to find centripetal force, which we will do now. So substituting in our value for mass, I believe it was six kilograms. Yes. So six multiplied by 4 pi squared divided by the radius r, which was 20 meters. And this gives us 6 times 4 squared times pi squared divided by 20. If you put this first section without the pi into a calculator, you'll get 24 divided by 5 multiplied by pi squared. And because we are finding centripetal force, this will be in newtons. And more specifically, newtons inwards, or newtons towards the center of the circle. Question four. In five seconds, an object in circular motion completes 50 revolutions. Find the angular velocity of the object. So, once again, we will consider our three important equations. And we are definitely going to be using the third equation here, because it's the only one that incorporates the angular velocity variable. And you might not quite see it yet, but we do have enough information to answer this question with just that equation, just the angular velocity equation. Okay, so we are given that an object in circular motion completes, oh, there's a misspelled, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> That's supposed to say completes, completes 50 revolutions. So what does 50 revolutions equate to in terms of the angle traversed. So if you imagine that we have an object in this position here and it undergoes 50 revolutions. So in one revolution, if you think about the line between the object and the center of the circle, in one revolution, it's going to go around here, back to its initial position. So in one revolution, 
So in one revolution, we are going to traverse an angle of two pi when we're talking in radians. So one revolution will lead to two pi change in the angle. So the change in the angle would be two pi with every revolution. And we are told that this object completes 50 revolutions. Here we can say 50 revolutions multiplied by two pi is equal to the change in angle after 50 revolutions, all right? And then we are told that the 50 revolutions occur in five seconds. And so the change in time for these 50 revolutions to occur is five seconds. We can simplify this expression by turning this into a 10 and getting rid of the five. So 50 divided by five is 10. 10 multiplied two is 20. Multiplied by pi is 20 pi radians per second. So in this question, we essentially converted data about revolutions per second into radians per second by noticing the fact that one revolution in a circular motion path is equivalent to a change in angle of two pi when talking in radians, 360 degrees. But we use radians typically in physics. Okay, question five. This question will be utilizing all three equations at once. Okay, so question five. The centripetal force exerted on a two kilogram mass traveling in a circular path is two pi divided by nine newtons. The radius of the circle is nine over pi meters. Find the angular velocity of the mass. Okay, so the way that we're gonna do this is first consider the fact that we're trying to find angular velocity. So angular velocity requires a change in angle over a change in time. We don't have any information so far about a change in angle over a change in time. What we do have information about is the centripetal force, the mass and the radius of the object undergoing circular motion. And we can use these three pieces of data in order to find this variable here, which is the tangential velocity. Then using the tangential velocity, we can find the period by substituting the tangential velocity value that we got from the previous step and the radius which we were given in order to find the period. And if we find the period, we can find the angular velocity very easily. All right, so let's do that now. Substituting our value for centripetal force is two pi over nine is equal to mass, which is two kilograms multiplied by this V squared, tangential velocity squared, divided by R, which we are given as nine over pi. And this whole fraction here is in the denominator of this whole fraction. We can simplify this expression a little bit. So two pi over nine is equal to two pi multiplied by V squared divided by nine. And if that looked a little weird, basically I was just using the mathematical idea that A divided by B divided by C is going to be equal to AC divided by B. If you're not sure how that works, click this video in the top right, it will explain it to you. And once you're done, come back. So if you look carefully at this equation that we've just formed here, you can see that it's equivalent to two pi divided by nine multiplied by one equals to two pi divided by nine multiplied by V squared. Here we can cancel out the two pi over nine from both sides and we're left with V squared is equal to one, which will tell us that V is equal to one meters per second. And I know it's technically plus or minus, ignore that, it's gonna be plus, all right because uh, I say so. So here we can find the period. So our velocity, our tangential velocity was one meter per second equal to two pi r, where r was nine over pi, divided by our big T here. Multiply both sides by big T, gives us T is equal to two pi times nine over pi. So the pi multiplied by the pi will, the pi here multiplied by the pi in the denominator of this fraction will cancel out and we'll be left with 
2 times 9, which is 18. And remember, we already took the t to this side of the equation. So t equals 18. We know that period is the time taken for one revolution to occur. So the time taken for one revolution to occur. Now the angle that is swept out by the object in one revolution is equal to two pi radians. So we know that the change in angle is two pi radians with a period of 18 seconds. And this will leave us with angular velocity is equal to pi over nine radians per second. The next video is circular motion theory part two where I go through some more complicated concepts and this second link will take you to the entire module five advanced mechanics playlist. So good luck and I'll see you in the next video.